In this video, I wanted to get you started on the Word Chapter 5 capstone and sort of walk you through that so that you understand how it works. So we'll go into My Lab IT under the Word Chapter 5 folder. This is your capstone assessment. I'm assuming you should have finished the training and exam before you complete this capstone assessment. So the order of the assignments, complete the training, then the exam, and then the assessment. For the capstone assessment, you will actually download files, complete the assessment in the software within Word, and then you will upload it back into My Lab IT for grading. Unlike the training and exam, those were simulations. It simulated where you were in Word, for example, and pretended that you were actually in Word, but you were not. Um, the capstone assessment you will actually complete in the Word software. I usually will have the um, PDF solution file for the capstone assessment because if there's something you're not quite sure about in the instructions for the assessment um, for the capstone, you can look at the PDF solution file and maybe that will clarify something for you. So I usually will have that open and this is the one for, for the Chapter 5 project. We'll be working on this flyer for a dental organization. So let's go into the capstone assessment. So you can see here I've already played around with it multiple times. Um, but let's go in and, um, and walk through it. It will show you your score, number of attempts. If you have multiple attempts, it will give you your highest score um, out of those attempts. Okay, so let's go in. I'm going to click on the, the capstone assessment. And as long as you don't have your pop-up blocker enabled, you know, it will pop up this window. You'll download the starting materials, work the assignment on your computer. That's just previewing the steps and the instructions which you actually download here. So this you can really ignore. We don't really use this that much. Uh, then you'll upload the completed assignment. You choose the file and then upload it. And then you submit it for grading. You can go back in and look at the rubric, edit your document and correct any errors and re-upload it until you achieve the score that you would like. And learn all of the features. So let's start with the download materials. It's going to download it into a zipped file. I usually download all of them together so that I just have one zipped file with all of the assignments or uh, the files that I need. But if you do lose a file or something, you can go back in and download them individually. Okay, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call it WIP, Work in Progress for Chapter 5. Yours will download with your name, I believe, as the first part of the file. And depending on your browser, it may show up down here. It may show up in the top right corner as far as your downloaded file. So it's a zipped file. I'm going to double click on it and it's going to bring me to the files. Now, if you watched my previous video, you'll know that a zipped file contains multiple files so that you don't have to download them individually. When you have a zipped file, you have to extract it or pull those files out of the extracted file. So you can always keep the extract the uh, zipped file in case you need it later. You can always extract it again and pull the, the files out if you need to. Okay, so you can see that it's a zipped file, has the zipper here. You can right click and extract it. You can always click or double click on it and extract them. And this is going to go into my work in progress for chapter five. It's going to create this new um, folder. I don't really want it to create a new folder within all these other folders I have, so I'm going to erase that. And I'm going to tell it to extract. 
Okay, so I go back into my Word Chapter 5 folder, and you can see that it has now extracted the files that I need. I have the instructions file. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And I also have several other files here. Uh, this one, which has your name in it, is the one that you usually will edit for these capstones. Um, then I have a picture file and a, a file with some newsletter text. Okay, so if I go into my instructions, it's going to tell me to open this file that has my name in it. Oops, not that one. <laughs> this one. It's the dentist file. Okay. Notice it's an empty file, and the reason it gives you an empty file to begin with is because my lab IT will ensure that you are working within your own file. It flags your file when you download it from my lab IT as being your file. It has metadata in it that you can't see that flags it as being your file. So when you upload it to my lab IT, is going to double check and make sure um, that when you submit it for grading that it is the file that you downloaded that um, you completed and are uploading for grading. So in essence it's making sure that you're not using someone else's file. It does also check to make sure that you don't copy and paste from someone else's file as well. So it will know if you've done that. So make sure that when you're in my lab IT you download the file from your account and you complete it and don't copy and paste for, from anyone else and then upload that file into your account. Okay, so we are starting with the blank file here. So as far as the instructions, we're just going to go through these instructions. This is uh, the scenario. You're an education coordinator for National Pediatric Health and you are developing a flyer promoting the health of children's teeth and you are going to be working on um, some documents for this. So this is a newsletter that will be available in print as well as online. So it tells you here which file to download. It's zero points and as you can see it's going to provide the instructions to you um, for each item. Okay. So some of the items have multiple uh, pieces to those instructions. So it says in step number two to display the non-printing characters, which I'll do that, and then press enter twice and then move to the beginning of the document, okay? So those non-printing characters, these are the paragraph symbols. That means I've pressed the enter key on the keyboard. It's a hard return. You'll also see if I pressed the space bar, it will show the dots. Or if I press tab, it will show the arrows each tab. It will show page breaks and things like that as well. So the formatting marks are nice to, to have on. Okay, so we're going to move to the beginning of the document, meaning before that first paragraph symbol. In step number three, we're going to insert an arrow which is the pentagon shape in the blocks arrows section. So I'm going to insert shape and it's going to be the pentagon arrow right here. And then I'm going to drag it and draw it. And it tells me that it should be a height of one inch and the width of six and a half inches. Okay, so I was almost there. I almost had it correct. So <clears throat> the next part of step number three is to go to position in the drawing tools. It's in the shape format tools. It's right here. So you'll go to position and go to more layout options. And what it's going to have you do is tell it exactly where this arrow should be placed on the page in terms of where should it be in, um, in terms of the margin or column 
or paragraph. So that you can give it an absolute position and it should not move. So the absolute horizontal should be 0 0.02 to the right of the column. And the absolute position in the vertical should be 0 0.02 below the paragraph. Okay, and when they talk about paragraphs, they talk about the paragraph symbols. Okay, so that should be exactly where it needs to be. Step number four, we're going to change the shape fill to red. And there are some different colors here. If it just says red or blue or yellow, those are the standard colors that you would find down here. So it says change it to red and select top and bottom text wrapping. Okay, so we're gonna go to text wrap and top and bottom. Then we need to change the shape field to a gradient. Okay, so we're going to go to Fill, Gradient, and we're going to choose Linear Diagonal, top right to bottom left, which is column three in the Light Variations section. So it should be top right to bottom left. And that's the darker gradient is at the top right, and then it lightens as you go to the bottom left. That's what that means. So we're going to move, remove the shape outline. I'll just go here to no outline. And apply a reflection shape of type reflection touching. So this is under shape effects. And it's a reflection. And it is type reflection touching. So it's the very first one here. Okay, I'm going to click on save and save this periodically. So I'm going to stop there and I'll have a series of videos that will complete this assignment.